What will the world be like when COVID-19 is gone? In the past two years, global efforts to contain the coronavirus have led to mass lockdowns turning some densely populated cities into ghost towns. Our daily routines and how we interact with our environments have profoundly changed, possibly forever. Cities are bearing the brunt of the crisis. They're ground zero for about 90% of the world's reported cases. But cities have also shown extraordinary resilience. Let's take a look at how they might develop in the not so distant future. Avery was born in Hong Kong during the winter of 2019, not long after the novel coronavirus was first detected in China's central city of Wuhan. He's never known a world without face masks and hand sanitizer. It's now 2029 and Avery is 10. By the time he could read an entire book by himself, the world completely transformed from the one that he was born into. Every morning, Avery and his father, Thomas, who is a banker, stay at home. Most schools and companies have now moved their morning operations online. It's the new normal created by prolonged periods of working from home during the pandemic. As a result, homes have also become workplaces. But in Hong Kong, one of the world's most densely populated cities, space is at a premium. Interior designers have solved the space problem by developing movable walls. With other adaptable interiors, each room can serve multiple functions. With the press of a button, Avery can have a clear floor space for his PE class. Flats with balconies have been in high demand since people care more about ventilation at home. Rooftop gardens, where people grow their own organic vegetables, have also become a common sight as more people lead healthier lifestyles. For buildings without outdoor areas, such as Avery's home, a centralized filtration system has been installed to purify indoor air. After lunch, Thomas heads to his office after dropping off Avery at school. The most obvious change in public buildings is the use of touchless technology. This after health experts concluded that about 80% of infectious diseases are transmitted through contact with contaminated surfaces. Doors are now all automatic. Ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, or UVGI technology, is present nearly everywhere for disinfection. Air cleaners and HVAC filters, short for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, have also been installed in all confined spaces. Thomas does not have a fixed work seat. No one does in his bank. Workstations have been turned into flex desks as people can choose to work from home. Some companies end up leasing less floor space to save money. A curved, sound-absorbing screen has become a new feature in office design. The freestanding room dividers are made of memory foam or other acoustic-tested fabric. They can be moved, relocated, and reconfigured without much difficulty. Less expensive than traditional fixed partitioning, they're also aesthetically appealing with their rounded edges. The only drawback for Thomas is the relative isolation he sometimes feels working in the office. By the time Thomas gets started at work, his wife, Shannon, has been on call for 24 hours at her hospital. Hospitals were at the front line of the COVID-19 war. The first surges of coronavirus infections had caught many hospitals around the world off guard because of shortages in protective gear, ventilators, and beds in special isolated rooms. Those memories remain vivid for Shannon, a veteran nurse in the intensive care unit. Years later, the operator of Shannon's hospital has shifted a large portion of its investment on redesigning existing medical facilities and boosting the capacity of its ICU. The ICU bay is enclosed and split into multiple makeshift negative pressure rooms, each installed with high-efficiency particulate air, HEPA, filters for contamination control. 
All medical equipment has been moved outside each room with space for doctors to remove their PPE at the entrance. For hospitals with fewer resources, a portable ICU made of repurposed shipping containers has become a popular alternative. Developed by Italy's connected units for respiratory ailments, they are as quick to assemble as a hospital tent, but equally safe to work in as a hospital's isolation ward, thanks to biocontainment features, including negative pressure. Individual pods are connected by an inflatable structure to create multiple modular configurations, which can be deployed in just a few hours. Changes in the way our cities work don't only look at interior design. Most buildings have replaced their surface materials with copper, which has been proven to hold one of the most effective anti-infection properties. The coronavirus can only survive for about four hours on it, compared to 24 hours on cardboard, 72 hours on plastic and stainless steel, and about 96 hours on glass. Copper surfaces make the cities futuristic, but somewhat cold, though greenery around the streets and an increasing number of open areas add some warmth. An after-dinner walk with his parents is one of Avery's favorite activities. A bike ride is even better. But tonight, the family of three is busy packing for a summer holiday in Bali. It will be the first ever overseas trip for Avery, and also the first for his parents in a decade. From the moment they arrive at the airport, everything seems surreal. For Thomas and Shannon, it feels like seeing an old friend who is no longer what they used to be. All passengers must undergo temperature checks. Robotic cleaners equipped with UV light that kills pathogens like COVID-19 are everywhere. Thomas and Shannon almost have to relearn the flight boarding procedures, but luckily they have become even more convenient. All check-in kiosks are touchless, including the self-service bag drop. After getting their boarding passes, the family enter a security checkpoint during their allotted time window, where 3D scanning has replaced humans to inspect carry-on baggage. Once the face scan terminals have verified their identity, they log onto an app called Virtual Queuing, where they can pre-book a time slot to board their flight. Only 20 people can register for the same time slot so that queues will not be overcrowded. The whole check-in protocol takes less than half an hour. As they sit and wait for their flight to take off, they start to feel more than just excitement. It's a purely happy memory for Avery to look at his city from the sky for the very first time. But his parents undergo mixed feelings of nostalgia, nervousness, and pride. A family trip to Bali, where the couple spent their honeymoon, is exciting and special. But after the thick white clouds block their view of the city, once again robust and vibrant after surviving the trauma of the unprecedented health crisis, they're surprised to find that they are already starting to miss home.